Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminolly, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, maybe, um, I think it's kind of horror, um, it's House of Leaves uh, by Mark Z. Danielewski. So this is a book that is notorious, I guess, for... Um, it's form as much as anything else. So, you know, it's it's a long book anyway. It's 700 pages long. Um, but it is told in a variety of styles. So you get sections which are relatively straightforward like this. Um, and then you get things that are still fairly straightforward but slightly different. Um, and then you get pages with only one word on it. Um, and you get Braille. <laughs> um, and what else have we got? And sections where you have to rotate the book in order to, to read what's going on. Um, so it's definitely an, a, definitely a unique book. Um, the only book I can think of that I've read that's kind of similar to this is a book called The Rorschach Texts, um, which uses similar kind of tricks of printing and things like that to tell its story. Um, but I think House of Leaves is, is definitely the better known of the two. Um, and it's a it's a fascinating book. So I've, I've just finished it um, I, and I, I, I wasn't sure about it um, at various times that I was reading, but I, end up, I ended up really, really liking it. Um, so the thing that's probably most interesting about it, I, I think even more so than the, the tricks he plays in terms of the, the layout of the pages and things like that, is the, the structure of it. So the central story um, is about a guy um, called... Um, Navidson, who um, buys a house which appears to be impossible. In, and by that I mean that when he measures the house, it is slightly larger on the inside than it is on the outside. And there, a strange kind of corridor appears between two of the rooms, um, which wasn't there when they viewed the house. So there's something weird about this house. So um, Navidson is a... Um, a filmmaker so he's a photographer and a filmmaker and he makes a film um about a house like a kind of pseudo documentary that he pieces together from security camera footage and things like that um and then you know really so increasingly weird stuff happens in the house and i won't go into what happens but you know, loads of weird stuff happens another guy whose name is i'm gonna to have to check what he's called so i don't mispronounce his name zampona yeah uh, sorry zampano studies um all the films that are that are you know that that Navidson has made about the house and, and there's one film that actually gets kind of a, a cinema you know a th theatrical release um and lots of people analyze the film and things like that so this guy Zampano um writes a book um about the, the film so analyzing the events that have led up to the creation of it you know analyzing the film itself pulling in the kind of film theory and and that kind of thing um and then another guy called Johnny Truant, who's kind of a something of a um, a waster in Los Angeles, who like works in a tattoo parlor and spends most of his time getting drunk and doing drugs, finds a copy of Zampano's book when Zampano passes away, um, and Johnny Truant then goes through the book and reads it and adds his own footnotes and things like that to it, um, and then a bunch of editors get hold of Johnny Truant's version of the book and they add their own footnotes and you know explanations and things like that and that final book is house of leaves so clearly it's you know none of that is true it's, it's all been created by this guy but it is you know that's the structure of the book so it is someone it is you know various people reacting to someone else's description of a series of events and um a film um, so structurally, I, I found that fascinating and it's really multi-layered and you get, you know, you literally get footnotes within footnotes in the book. It's quite crazy. Um, it's also quite exhausting. So, you know, when you, the, the first, the early parts of the book in particular are really heavy with footnotes and you can see, you know, the text is, is really quite dense, especially as the pages are big. Um, so it's quite heavy going at first and it certainly because it's so unlike you know most books it's, it reads much more like non-fiction than fiction um because of that it definitely takes some getting used to 
Um, but I found once I got used to it, um, I really flew through it. Um, and, you know, you, you get to learn that there are bits you can skip. So I've quoted on this channel before um, the quote from Elmore Leonard in his, his Rules of Writing. So Elmore Leonard is a very famous crime writer, if you don't know him. And one of his rules of writing is leave out the parts that readers tend to skip. Now, in this book, Danielewski has gone out of his way to include parts that readers will want to skip. Um, so many of the footnotes are relevant and are worth reading. And particularly in like the main section to the book where you've got Zampano's book and then Johnny Truant's footnotes. A lot of Johnny Truant's footnotes aren't really about the text at all. They're actually about his life. So you, you effectively get two stories running in parallel. So you get Zampano's interpretation of what's happened to Nevinson and his family. And then you get a st the story about Johnny Truant's life, which and, jo and Johnny Truant's life rapidly goes downhill the more of this book that he reads. Um, what I came to realise the more of the book I read is that at its heart, the actual story is quite simple. So you've got these two, you know, parallel running stories, one about Navidson, one about Johnny Truant. Um, and then, you know, you've got all these footnotes to, to navigate as well. And some of the footnotes you can definitely not read. Now, some of them are, well, in my opinion, so some of them are literally, there's, there's one section where there's two whole pages of footnote, which are just a list of names of people who've, I think it's like written books about a particular subject. So I, I do not believe you have to read that. Now, having said that, there are people who take this book incredibly seriously and, you know, I've read it multiple times and pour over every single word and look for like typographical errors and spelling mistakes and things like that and try to draw significance from them. Um, that's not how I read. There is no way I was going to spend that amount of time reading this book because I've got a ton of other books, as you can see, that I need to get to. Um, so I read it much more in the way I would read a regular novel, albeit, you know, there are parts that challenge that because, it, you know, at times you literally have to rotate the book in order to, to read what's going on in the page. And there's one incredible sequence right towards the end where you have to read the first letter of each word and piece those together. Um, in order to figure out what's going on. And that was a mind-blowing section. It's about three or four pages long. And by the end of it, when I was then reading normal text after it, I found that I was trying to do the same thing with that text and not reading it in the normal way. It almost like retrains your brain. Um, so plot-wise, I'm not going to tell you any more than I've told you already. Um, structure, you know, I've talked about the structure and I've talked about the layout of the book. What's, I think, most interesting about the book is kind of the tone um, and you know people have described this as um, a terrifying book I didn't find it terrifying at all but I definitely found it very unsettling there are some sections in particular which re were really troubling um, so trigger warning for people there's a fair bit of discussion of sexual abuse in this book including child sexual abuse um, which is really troubling um, and there are there's, there's just a whole sense of the uncanny about the book as well um, that is that really gets under your skin after a while because you really don't truly know what's going on. Um, and it's it's very, very strange. It's very strange. Uh, and, and all the pieces, you know, I, I, I don't know if someone has read this book and, and managed to fit all the pieces of it together. I'm sure some very clever person has. I definitely haven't managed to do that. By the end of it, I definitely got a sense of what I think um, the author is trying to get at with this book. And, and I think, well, I'm not even going to say what I think it's about because I think that would spoil it. But um, it's, I, if, if he's doing what I think he's trying to do, it's very, very clever. Um, and it's only as you get towards the end that you can really put those pieces together. And it ends up really not being about the story so much. It's about, and this sounds very pretentious, but about human existence. Um, and about psychology and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's it's a genuinely fascinating and unique book. Um, I know a few people out there have read it, so do let me know um, in the comments what, what you thought of it, because a few people commented when they saw I was going to be reading it. Um, I've been doing it as a buddy, uh, as a buddy read with um, MJ from um, Reading This Life, um, 
who I'm, I'm not sure MJ's enjoying it quite as much as, as I did. I think she's got a bit frustrated by it. But to be fair, I was quite frustrated by it at the start. And, and I've managed to get through that frustration. Um, but I know plenty of people who have DNF this book and, and a few people who've DNF'd it more than once. Um, because you, you do have to get your mind in, in the right frame, I think, to read it. Um, but my advice would be, if you want to read it, if it's a book you've considered reading, I would definitely give it a go. Um, if you can get a library copy like I did, all the better, because it's 28 quid, which is ridiculously expensive. I'd been wanting to read it for a while, but there's no way I was going to pay that for it. And even second-hand copies are quite pricey. Um, but then it happened to turn up in my local library, so I grabbed it. Um, but yeah, my advice would be, um, give it a try, but do not take it too seriously. Don't feel like you have to read every single word and analyse every bit of punctuation um, because I, I don't think you do to enjoy it and to get something out of it. I, I certainly enjoyed reading it. I found it thrilling. I found it quite moving at times. Um, as I say, I found it unsettling um, It's and, and completely compulsive. Like I really could not put it down. Um, but I read it, as I say, I read it more like a thriller than like a textbook. And I think a lot of people read it like a textbook and, and really dive into the analysis of it. So my recommendation would be don't do that. Just just read it and see how you get on with it. Um, yeah. So as I, as I always say, if you've read this, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you thought of it. Um, hope everyone's safe and well and uh, really good stuff. And I will speak to you all again very soon. Cheerio.